Okay, so today we're going to talk about America on the world stage and really the emergence of foreign policy in the Jefferson administration. So we're going to focus on the age of Jefferson, which is really not just Jefferson. It's Jefferson, Madison, and Monroe, 1800 or 1801 to 1825, so a quarter of a century of dominance of this Virginia, Democrat, Republican, uh, agrarian-based politics that are going to mold America. So it's a shift away from federal control to state control, but it's also a shift because remember, Jefferson's he, he and Madison have been criticized of being Francophiles. Uh, he and Madison have been criticized as being pro-French and anti-British. And this anti-British sentiment is going to end up leading to what? what? What happens in this era? We end up going to war with the British in the War of 1812. So that's what we're building to today. So please just know that all these steps are steps to war with Britain, all these things that happen. But really his first struggles, so look at the top of 182. His first struggles are going to be against pirate ships, which I'll talk about in a minute. So let's read the header here. From the founding of uh, as colonies to their fight for independence, the United States was strongly influenced by the actions of other nations. Even President Washington had to deal with uh, foreign entanglements, likely which led to his warning against permanent alliances and foreign affairs. Jefferson's foreign policy. President Jefferson brought considerable foreign policy experience. He was a foreign minister in Europe and France, Secretary of State. This experience led him to success with the Louisiana Purchase, but would be challenged with other questions. As a matter of policy and principle, Jefferson really did try to avoid war, rejecting permanent alliances like Washington said. The problem is what? War becomes unavoidable, not during Jefferson's, but during Madison's. But here's something interesting you didn't know. Maybe someone did. From 1801 to 1805, the United States fought an undeclared naval war against pirate ships on the Barbary Coast. Let me say that again. From 1801 to 1805, we fought a naval war against pirate ships. Don't think Jake and the Neverland Pirates or Pirates of the Caribbean. These are not nice people. These pirates are awful, and what do they do to people when you come into their waters? They steal your stuff. And worse, in some cases, even violence. Washington and Adams recognized that we needed merchant ships in that area, but we also needed to uh, pay off the pirate leaders so that they didn't mess with our ships. So we paid them what was called tribute. It's like hush money. It's like giving the mafia money, right? Like, don't burn my store down. I'll put you on the payroll. You understand that? When Jefferson becomes president, the leaders of the Barbary Pirates want more money. And Jefferson says, screw it. We're not paying any of it. It sends the US Navy over to handle business. And for four years, Really, we don't win anything decisive, and neither do they. But we do earn the respect in the region, because we stood up to the nasty pirates. And that's, interestingly, Jefferson's first foray into, into foreign policy troubles. But that's nothing compared to what's going to come next in all these challenges to American neutrality. So here's what's interesting. And I hate, I'm so glad that they changed the language. If you look here. I want to read this uh, Chesapeake Le Leopard Affair. And I'm so glad that, that AMSCO has changed the wording because for, for many years they called sailors seamen. And really, that's a tough word to use with 16 year olds, especially in a chapter that has, the, if you look at the bottom of 183, the Non Intercourse Act. <laughs> really don't want to be talking about seamen, but that's where my career started was talking about seamen being impressed, impressment in the Non-Intercourse Act. True story. So this like whole page has weird sexual connotations. But luckily, they changed it to sailors, which is much better. Uh, the Chesapeake Leopard Affair. By the way, the word is leopard, OK? Somebody said leopard. 
Do you go see the snow leopard at the zoo? Like it's not like, isn't that like the thing that you wear to dance in? Isn't that called, isn't that? Leotard. Yeah, that's not that word. That word's leopard. Please don't pronounce that wrong. I know, they English try is, to make it all like fancy. English is hard, I know. And you know, it, I, there, there's a guy once, I worked in a fancy restaurant. I promise you, this is a true story. I'm on tape here. I was a waiter and a bartender, and I knew this guy, he was a little rough. He was trying to impress his girlfriend, and he wanted to order the house white wine, because like the house white wine is like, and he said he wanted house white wine. And I stood there for a second like, what the heck is the Witte wine? <laughs> like, that's not a French word, dude. The word's white. It's just the house white wine. It's not Witte. It's not Witte. It's white. It's the house white. But I had to stand there like, is he for real? And then I realized he's trying to impress his girlfriend. Can you uh, go along with that? Yeah, I don't want to embarrass anybody. I want to, I'm working for a tip. It's all smiles. I don't know what you do like <laughs> Nick knows, these rest, you've been in the restaurant world. It's all smiles in the restaurant. You're looking for a tip if you're a bartender or a waiter. No, the kitchen. You didn't call it yelling. The kitchen, it's a lot of yelling. Nick says the kitchen's a lot of yelling. Um, the Chesapeake Leopard Affair. So let me explain what happens. There's an incident at sea. See, here's what Britain's doing to us. They are taking, let's do a little context here, focus. What's going on from 1800 to 1810 in Europe? And unless your name is Porter and you're in my Mod 1 oh, class, you probably don't know. I know. Oh, Jamie knows. There's um, a war with French. Yeah, who's in charge of France? Think um, Rumpy Stall. Napoleon. Napoleon. Yeah, like What's Napoleon like? What kind of guy? Yeah, so what we're most concerned with is the fact that we, who are our top trade partners? England and France. France is run by Napoleon, and England and France are both fighting with each other, and England and France are both using us in a pawn in a game to dominate the seas. What do I mean? Well, neither of those countries wants us trading goodies to the other. So they set up naval blockades. Britain's navy is stronger than France's navy, a little bit. So their blockade is even better. So we're even madder at Britain than we are at France. But really, both of them are impressing our sailors. And impressment is a fancy word for, think about this, you're an American merchant ship. You've got a bunch of sailors that are like, dude, your age. A British ship comes up from the British like Navy, and they not only take your cargo, because you, they, 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 you're not, if you're not trading with them, then you're trading it with France, but they also take your sailors and put them in the British Navy, and put them to work. More hands on deck. You ever heard that expression, right? That's called impressing our sailors. We didn't like that. Our government was very angry that that was happening. Can you blame them? It's basically like shanghaiing our, our, our sailors, putting them to work. So we, we spoke out against it. And then in 1807, an incident takes place. I think it was, yeah, 1807. Right off the coast of Virginia, the British warship, the Leopard, fired on the US ship, the Chesapeake, and killed three American sailors and what did many americans want to do because britain did this they saw it as an act of war and they wanted to what declare war on britain and jefferson hates britain and yet he smartly what avoids war by what saying no instead he goes to diplomacy he's going to persuade the Democrat Republicans in Congress to pass something called the Embargo Act. Have you heard of the Embargo Act? It was a bad idea. Let me explain. How was it a bad idea? Well, you'll see. Have you ever heard the expression, cut off your nose to spite your face? Has anyone ever heard that expression? Nothing your grandpa or somebody used with you? OK, let me do an analogy. Your family is going out for a fun night of, let's say, bowling and dinner. 
You're excited about it. Except at about seven o'clock, right before you're supposed to leave, your mom is yelling at you about something, okay? Your mom is yelling at you about something and you get in an argument with her and then you say, fine, go without me. And you slam the door and you sit on your bed and your heart's racing and you're really angry at your mom and you watch them pull out of the driveway and for a brief moment, you're very satisfied like I showed them. Yeah, she wants to act like that to me. Huh, I don't need to go, I'll just stay here. And about an hour and a half later, you realize what? You missed out on a free meal at a restaurant and a fun night of bowling, because you showed them, and they're having fun and you're not. You're just sitting home looking at your phone. And what you did was you cut off your nose to spite your face. You made a decision, what? That you were gonna be spiteful, but you did something that hurt you. Your little play with mom just cost you. That's the embargo act. Let me explain. Jefferson's answer to retaliate against Britain and France, particularly Britain because of the Chesapeake Leopard Affair, was to not allow American merchants to trade with other countries. That's one way to keep the ships from being taken and the sailors from being impressed, isn't it? What's the issue, though? What's the issue? Don't do the questions now. Just look at me. Just look at me. We can do the questions in a few minutes. What's the issue? No money. Being made. The merchants are not making money. And most of the merchants are from New England. And they don't like Jefferson anyway. So there's a big push in New England, places on the coast, places that do trade, cities like Boston with ports, that, to fight against the Embargo Act. And Jefferson might have gone too far with the Embargo Act. Let me show you a very famous political cartoon. This is like very likely to be on the Regents of the AP exam. This is probably one of the five most famous political cartoons in American history. I'm hoping you can see it. I'm making it as big as I can. I'm going to point out some things and then I'm going to ask you a question. Don't look this up. Don't cheat. Let's look at this together. Let's point out what's happening. Are you ready? This is a British ship in the distance. This is an American what? Holding the barrel of something? Merchant. Merchant. This is a license. It's like an act. So the turtle must represent the? What's the turtle represent? The government. The government embargo act. And that, that face looks familiar. Who is that? He's in charge of the turtle, Jefferson. Jefferson. So you know the surface of this cartoon if you see it. It's important that you can analyze these cartoons. So Jefferson has a pat snapping turtle. He's saying, darn it, how it nicks him. And who's being held back by the Embargo Act, the American merchant, and what's he saying? Oh, this cursed, oh, grab me. It's grabbing his, his pant leg, right? He's grabbing his butt, not letting him trade with Britain. So what's the surface here is the Embargo Act is restricting trade with Britain and other countries. Now, okay, why are you showing me this political cartoon and telling me it's famous? Well, there's one little wrinkle in this. There's a play on a word. Anyone catch it? What about it, Ned? It's a weird word. Oh, grab me. You're right. You're on the right track. Nobody figured it out mod one. Is it something in French? No, it's not. That's a really good guess. That's a great guess. It's not something in French. Uh, I think that's just a brand name, I would assume. What is embargo? Embargo just is a word. It's a word of like a, a trade. Of, it's just a defined word. But you're on the right track. Um, oh, it's yes, Dom got it. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, the embargo. It's a subtle jab directly at the embargo act. It's embargo backwards. Oh, grab me is back. Which the snapping turtle's doing is like showing that it's the embargo act that he the merchants are mad about. So it's like a little subtle secret. 
Like we're mad at the government. That's crazy. Yes, uh, Nick said a, 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 a let's go Brandon type deal. Um, yeah, it, it is in a sense. It is code. You're right. And uh, the embargo act got so ugly in 1808. And think about it. If you're a merchant, you know, you guys, people in here have relatives that own businesses, right? If the government tells you your business can't do business, then you don't have livelihood. So you're going to be pretty mad. And so the Embargo Act becomes very much not well received. And Jefferson actually repeals it shortly before he leaves office. The repeal of the Embargo Act. But retain this. This is important. If you could retain that, that'd be great. So I'm going to let you, I'll give you, I'm going to stop the video. I'll give you like, I know some of you are already doing it. Why don't you take like five minutes and type those questions.